I haven't even gotten my phone hooked up on my tripod. Okay, I was disconnected there for a second. So I'm out in the garden and I was weeding and I decided I would go live because I was out here weeding and I found both purslane and spurge and we eat the purslane so I thought I would do a quick informative video on purslane and spurge. So I'm going to turn the camera around here. Anyways, let's see if it'll turn around. Come on. Hey everybody, who's all in here? Okay, turn the camera around. There we go. Okay, so I'm out in the garden weeding. I'm over here in the onions. They, these onions aren't looking too hot. There's some good, better ones down there. And then they're, these ones over here are looking really, really good. Here I have some extra broccoli and uh, my celery all died, so I planted some kohlrabi. Then I have my Brussels sprouts and broccoli over there. Anyways, I'm weeding the onions. Got a little behind, which I'm glad I did because um, I can take some of this. Some of it will get thrown, you know, thrown. But I'm going to save some of this. This is purslane. So purslane is high in omega fatty acids, omega-3 fatty acids, has vitamin A, C, magnesium, manganese, potassium. It is really good for you. So the taste, you can eat it raw or cooked. It tastes like a sour, it's got like a lemony flavor, like, I don't know, a little bit like water chestnuts, but, but water chestnuts, but more sour. Anyways, I heard about this being edible and it can grow on sidewalks and all kinds of stuff. I heard about this being edible a few years back and last year we started putting it on our um we bake i take the whole stem i'll put this whole thing on a i'll put all of that with onion powder garlic powder on top of the chicken breast and i have chicken out for tonight so i'll put i'm gonna put that on top and i'll show you the final product it, yeah if i remember anyways this is so yummy makes the chicken taste so good and it is so healthy for you high in dense nutrients like i said omega-3 fatty acids but there is a danger because there is something called spurge or prostate spurge i believe um and that is this over here so i had both of them in here when i was weeding so i'm like i am going a lot of people will get them confused this is edible and if you crack open i'll show i'm gonna put the tripod right here on the ground so you can see Ugh. If you crack open the stem, this, it's like green in there, okay? It's not, there we go, it's green. So, edible, spurge, not edible. The difference, it looks very similar, right? It has the same size leaves, but the leaves are thinner and a little darker green. And then it, it, the red stem has a similar color stem, it has a little darker stem. And on the inside, let me see, there we go. It's white. You can open it up and it will be like milky, white in there. That's how you know. There we go. Here, here's a better one. Come on, camera focus. I'm waiting for it to focus. There we go. So you see that milky white substance? I'll squeeze. That is toxic. Now, will it kill you? No. But will you get really sick? Yes. So I wouldn't, so I figured since I was weeding, I would show the difference because some people have gotten really sick thinking, oh, people said purslane was edible. Um, yeah, that is prostate spurge or just spurge. And that is purslane. Edible? Not edible. And I'm going to continue weeding the onions here. And then I got, since I have you guys on live, I'll quickly take you. Um... Oh, nobody's been talking yet. I just checked the chat. Anyways, um, over here I have my Brussels sprouts. And tonight, I will. I, I didn't do it last night because I was just beat. Um, but tonight, I think I'm going to go do a live hunting with my black flashlight. My black light, my black light flashlight. for Because um, we've had a lot of cabbage moths. The boys have been chasing them around, collecting them. This is the broccoli. We have the beans here. It's been, we have the severe drought here now, so I'm trying to keep up to keep things alive. Some stuff aren't, isn't coming up. I have to reseed some areas. Here's so there's the pe beans and here's peas. And there's all my cucumber, my roll cucumbers. Then I have over here 
I have my slicer tomatoes and over here I have all my peppers and then over here I have all my romas and then over here I have my cherry all my cherry tomatoes and then I have carrots they haven't come up yet and carrots over here I planted mm, uh, about 7,000 carrots so I'll have to thin them out it won't be real good but trying to keep up with the watering you see there's my potatoes I'm gonna be um, weeding and hilling that up I added more dirt and stuff to those potatoes in the containers over there so that's the update around here um, just thought I would show you oh and I'm walking on boards so we typically we have a northwest shelter belt and when then we have northwest winds not a big deal well lately when you have 70 80 mile an hour straight line winds um last year was bad and i had to reseed a lot of things and um like 15 tomato plants snapped so this year we're ahead of it when we have the strong south winds we put the osb up against the t-post against the cattle panels and embrace it with some cinder blocks and then that kind of helps prevent block them because I, this isn't a greenhouse, can't protect it, but next on the, after we get the first batch of chickens processed, we are going to be building a cattle panel greenhouse. Anyways, I thought, I, since I was weeding, I thought I would show the difference between purslane and spurge. Oh, and there's one of those stinkers, one of those white moths, the white butterflies. Get away from my plants. They lay the green little cabbage worms that eat everything. They love brassicas. Um, so I have some, some pest damage, as you see, some holes. Some holes, when you're doing organic gardening, that's what happens. Um, but I have put down slug stuff, and organic slug stuff. And then um, tonight, I think I'm going to sprinkle the tomatoes earth. And then since I did find a cabbage worm on one of my tomato plants, um, I think at tomorrow night before the dusk, I'll spray neem oil on them. And yeah, just always lots of stuff around here. So thanks for sharing this information. Yeah, you're welcome. Anyways, uh, back to the weeding. I'm a, and then I'll be moving the sprinkler. It's uh, a huge, ridiculous uh, um, water bill these days, being in North Dakota and severe drought. But anyways... That onion looks really yummy. Mm. Anyway, some of them turned out great. Some of them not. It, it, when you're having a hello from Poconos in Pennsylvania, I'm a seed saver. Yep, me too. This year, I last year I saved quite a few seeds. This year, I'm going to save for the first time lettuce. I didn't save lettuce seeds last year. Um, going to... Um, save carrots and lettuce this year for the first time and let a few th I did let I did try out letting the carrots go to seed last year and they did but then we had a hard freeze um or an early, like a um, four week early hard freeze so I uh didn't collect those seeds so anyways here's the quick update and um uh, anyways yep meat birds are over there chillaxing there's the other chicken coop, the egg layer coop. And hey, anyways, so you guys have a good one and we'll see you on the flip side. Bye.